Oh, here we are. Look at this amazing landscape here, looking at how coastal erosion can affect areas such as this. And we've got here very much a headland is forming and a bay is created. If you actually have a look at the waves, what you'll notice is the waves start to do something called wave refraction. So when you've got that headland on a discordant coastline, which is that alternating band to hard and soft rock, you can see here the headland going out into sea causes the waves to bend around it. When they bend around it, like we can see here, they will start to inject their energy through erosion process, hydraulic action, abrasion, onto the headland. What will then happen over time is start to create other landforms, such as arches, stacks and stumps. So over time you'll notice a crack forming, hydraulic action from that wave refraction will create the crack to turn into a cave. As that gets bigger and bigger through increased abrasion, what have you, that will then create something called an arch. I want to stop us there for a second and consider why an arch could be affected and why areas such as this are affected. So, if you have a look here, we've got lots of vegetation growing, okay? Vegetation will have roots. The roots will grow into the rock, and as this is very much a soft rock, the rock will get easily broken apart. And if you imagine on top of that arch, that rock will then start being broken apart and become easily falling away, creating a steep land a landfall called a stack. That process, though, of the roots growing is something called biological weathering. Biological weathering roots, or even animals burrowing into the rock, can think coastlines such as this and could lead to increased chance of mass movement that I'll look at later. So, we've got our stack in place. Over time, increased erosion will then lead to that stack potentially falling into the sea, creating something called a stump. So, I just want to link back to that idea though of weathering. Okay, we have a range of weathering ideas. You've got biological weathering, animals burrowing, roots growing into the bedrock, creating an instability for our headlands, for our coastal cliffs, which could lead to mass movement. Another type is mechanical weathering. Now, that could be freeze fall weathering, where very much cold environments, water will go into a fracture, into a crack. When it gets incredibly cold, the water will freeze in the winter months as it freezes, expands about 30 percent. And when it does this, this constant process of expanding, contracting over many, many months can cause the water to break away, and that can then impact our coastal areas, affect these rocks here, creating increased chance of mass movement. Our final type is chemical weathering. This is acid rain. Increased pollution from car use, from industry, what have you, will lead to a more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. That then means that when we have rainfall, we could have increased acid in our rain. That could then affect areas which are heavily impacted on coastlines with limestone chalk, which will get affected from chemical weathering. Now, all of these processes will affect coastal areas such as this, and this could lead to increased erosion rates. Weathering can further erosion, making it more apparent, and affect more bays forming, more stacks, more stumps, more wave cut platforms affecting areas such as this. Also, something to consider is another, is known as a sub-aerial process, weathering comes up, where we've got a stream running here. Now, water is simply flowing over the top. Water flowing can weaken the rock. Water going into the cliffs can cause it to become saturated and leading to mass movement which we'll look at in more detail later. But have a look at this, this is beautiful. We can see here the erosion's taking place, creating this bay, all of these rocks here at the bottom that will be eroded through attrition over the months, over the years, creating quite an incredible and distinctive landscape here along the whole West Coastline. So great geography in action.